Hi, I'm Jitze Dijkstra, Professor of Classics at the University of Ottawa. This is Peopling the Past. So what topic are you talking about today? Today, I'm going to talk with you about ancient Egyptian graffiti, in particular, what information they provide us about the personal piety of ordinary visitors to Egyptian temples. temples. So let's get started. When walking through the city, you have no doubt come across graffiti, which can vary from true pieces of art, such as the stencil to the left made by Banksy, to simple designs or messages, like the mailbox to the right. The practice of leaving a text or a figure on an object not originally intended for that purpose was already widespread in antiquity. But unlike, unlike today, ancient graffiti did not generally evoke associations with vandalism, subversiveness, and youth culture, and had a much wider application in all sorts of contexts. The most famous of these ancient graffiti are those of Pompeii, where hundreds have been found from political slogans to caricatures like the ones shown here. But it's in Egypt where we have the largest concentration of graffiti in the ancient world. In this beautiful land, graffiti covering the whole stretch of Egypt's history are encountered in large numbers on rocks, in tombs, in quarries, and in particular, on the walls of the many temples that dot the Nile Valley. Even though these graffiti has all, have also been left on surfaces not intended for that purpose, the major difference with other areas in the Mediterranean, or for that matter, modern graffiti, is that the majority of the graffiti from Egyptian temples have been inscribed or painted for religious reasons. This reflects the distinctively Egyptian idea that leaving a graffito on a temple wall means being with the divinity forever and hence enjoy his or her eternal protection. In this image from the temple of Isis at Aswan, we see how a certain Imhotep has first written his name in Demotic, the most cursive form of the ancient Egyptian scripts, and then represented himself beside it. This is no idle scratching. Imhotep carved this graffito to gain the deity's protection in life and death. And let's face it, isn't that a comforting thought? These graffiti then are a treasure trove for the study of the personal piety of ordinary visitors to temples in ancient Egypt and later times when these buildings continue to be visited by Christians. Despite their enormous potential and omnipresence on temple walls, graffiti have hardly been systematically studied. This is in large part because scholars working on temples have long approached graffiti negatively seeing them in opposition to the official temple theology as expressions of a debased form of the ancient Egyptian religion, often referred to as popular religion. It is only in the last 20 years or so that scholars have begun to realize that they form an integral part of that religion and are a prime source for the personal experience of religion at Egyptian temples. And I've put some references on this slide. No doubt stimulated by an increased interest in ancient graffiti more generally, graffiti studies in Egypt have flourished in the last decade and numerous projects are currently underway at sites throughout the country to harvest the rich data hitherto neglected from the temple walls. What sources or data do you look at? I would like to give you an idea of the richness and diversity of the material by presenting some results of a recently completed project focusing on the graffiti from Elefantine, an ancient, uh, an ancient site situated on an, a longitudinal island in the Nile opposite Aswan in southern Egypt that you can see on this picture here. The temple of the ram-headed god Knum was one of the most imposing temples in Pharaonic Egypt. In the Roman period, it received a massive new forecourt and that's number two on this plan here. And you can see that it is almost as big as the temple itself, number one. So, but we are going to focus on number two. 
Unlike its appearance today, this was by no means an empty space, as it used to be filled with statues of Egyptian deities and even Roman emperors, and was lined with palm trees. This setting, albeit distinctively Egyptian, would therefore not have been unlike public market squares or agorai elsewhere in the Roman e Near East at this time. Then in late antiquity, the forecourt was overbuilt with mud brick houses, some of which have been left standing, as can be see here, seen here on the left, with a small church, uh, while a small church was built in the pronios or entrance way of the temple. In March 2013, I recorded 180 graffiti on the forecourt in collaboration with Sabrina Higgins, who presented the previous video on Thecla and women and is of course highly recommended. The graffiti demonstrate that in Roman times, ordinary visitors would have had access to the forecourt on at least some occasions during the year, which accords well with the Agora-like architecture of the court. The Roman use and Christian reuse of the terrain is embodied in two graffiti on the steps leading to the pronios. Heading towards the sanctuary, forbidden for laymen to enter when the cults were still performed, is the figure of a deity. And you see the legs of the deity uh, still very clearly over here. It continues over there. It overlaps with the representation facing in the opposite direction of a man with hands in praying gesture. So the legs are over here. We have the body, the head, and two uh, arms spread out in prayer. This last graffito was evidently left by a Christian after visiting the church in the Pronios, which was accessible in late antiquity. And so it was possible for him to come out of the temple and head towards the forecourt, leaving the graffito along the way. The graffiti of which the different categories are listed here date mostly to the Roman period. So how did visitors express their personal devotion? In addition to the deity that we have already seen, they could mark their presence by leaving a pair of feet, in this case, subscribed by the worshiper called Nilamon, an offering table symbolizing their eternal offering before the God, a boat, commemorating their journey, or a god in animal form, such as this ram, which is the sacred animal of the god Knum, the main deity of the temple. However, not all graffiti were necessarily incised with equally religious intentions. Among the animal graffiti are several fish, which have no apparent connection with the temple cult. And a group of 14 game boards, which you see over the right here, if they date to the Roman era, seem evidence of people merely wishing to pass the time. Finally, of special interest is a group of four inscriptions starting with the Greek word for place, topos, plus a name. They are commonly known from throughout the Near East to indicate the booths of vendors on agorai and other public spaces. This type of inscription was adapted to the context of the Egyptian temple where it was used to indicate the stalls of vendors. In this case, a man referred to as the Libyan, who sold their wares during festivals or other religious events. What wares this Libyan sold, however, will probably remain unknown. How can this topic or material tell us about real people in the past? The graffiti from the Knum temple at Elephantina revealed that in the Roman period, the temple forecourt was accessible to visitors, no doubt from the region, who came here perhaps on occasion, but more likely on several occasions during festivals throughout the year and incised the majority of the graffiti. The graffiti are typically Egyptian in that they predominantly express the religious piety of the visitors to the temple. We have seen feet, offering tables, boats, sacred animals and deities. While the four topos inscriptions indicate the stalls of vendors selling them goods during festivals. Not all graffiti are of a religious nature, however, as witnessed by the fish and possibly the game boards. Thus, these new graffiti provide important evidence for the religious and other uses of the temple forecourt in the Roman period, 
and as we see with the praying man, also of its later Christian reuse. So to conclude, as this project illustrates, graffiti from Egyptian temples can tell us a lot about the personal piety of individuals, the cults they engaged in and the activities they employed on the temple terrain. To come back to the graffito of Imhotep, we can almost feel his determination to receive the God's eternal protection. And in a way, by publishing this graffito, we at least grant him his wish of eternalizing his presence with the deity. Graffiti are definitely one of the best sources for studying the lived religious experience of ancient Egypt. They provide us with dark windows into how ordinary people experienced ancient Egyptian religion. We can hardly get closer to them than that. Thank you very much for listening. And if you want to know more about this topic, uh, please go to peoplingthepast.com where you can find additional resources if you would like. Thank you.